We have worked together with Open Ear since oh, 15 years ago and started our first version in production uh, six years ago. And uh, up to now, we have uh, 76,000 patients and 79 organization units uh, organized in our system and running. And we have a kind of surveillance app that uh, where we can see that it's about eight to ten thousand new templates on the patient level that is created every working day today. So um, uh, we were asked to concentrate on the demographic side and I will talk about this in general for about 10 to 15 minute, minutes and after that uh, we are trying to, uh, Roger will have a demonstration on our server and hopefully discussion and question afterwards. Uh, just a short repetition. Uh, the, oh, so, uh, the open air system is uh, consisting of two major parts. Uh, you, the most used one is the ear archetypes, and uh, it's actually containing the medical record. And um, uh, the healthcare system is very complicated. And my guess is that if you have to cover all speci specialization down to the subspecialization level, uh, it will be need of thousand different archetypes. The top level uh, archetype on the air side is always a composition. It's a mother uh, archetype. If you look at the demographic side, it's much smaller. Uh, it's a container for identity, roles, addresses, civil status, citizenships, and relationships, and also language and uh, that's a major component. It's rather few variants and needs actually. I've, I would just make a guess that it's about 30 variants that is enough to cover actually national level. Uh, the, the top archetype is, uh, or the mother is here, party and not composition. And the four different types of uh, demographic objects is person, organization, group, and resource. They are uh, similar in their building, but they, they are these four types. Now we'll return to that later. Um, The thing is that uh, if you have a demographic uh, open air database uh, server, it actually can cover a uh, need of a nation or region, or uh, it's uh, very scalable. And a demographic server can serve a lot of different ear servers. Uh, it's just a matter of, of, of uh, hardware capacity. So uh, you can't do the opposite. No, an air server can, can't serve different demographics. It's not uh, a good solution. I would point out some, some important uh, uh, issues about the demographic. Uh, in the model, information model, it's built up that the communication between the demographic side and the air side is through a coded ID number. That's uh, of security reasons. Uh, in the future, may, we might see an intrusion also in um, the data journals. Uh, can, uh, the Pentagon Papers be published, probably even patient journal can be, be attacked. And, uh, but if you have this solution uh, and not place a lot of demographic uh, data 
on the air side, you can keep the uh, high security level. And if you make there is an intrusion, you see the patient data, but you, you can't see who it belongs to. Um, uh, so uh, this is, this is a very uh, important feature. Uh, also on the as well as in air air solar side, you have to have versioning because a lot of demographic data is changed over time. You, you move around and change address. The patient ID can be of different types during a uh, a lifetime and 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 uh, this you have to have a memory or log of what's happening and the last uh, major feature is uh, relationships uh, relationer, uh, and uh, i come back to that uh, a little later uh, if you see again at the different types of demographic uh, uh, objects. You have person, but uh, a person can act in different different roles. The classical is your patient, uh, patient, uh, <clears throat> patient journal or data journal and uh, uh, all the demographic information of importance you can reach by adding or updating against the population register that covers actually all Sweden, uh, mostly uh, living in Sweden. Uh, another role is when the patient reports uh, their own measurements of uh, data. And that data has to be placed somewhere. And with this construction, that we have it, it can be on a safe uh, level in, in, in their own journal, but not combining, but the healthcare, uh, the healthcare people ca can reach it easily. And the uh, person that uh, gives the support can, for instance, uh, use the bank ID and be identified. And then you have the post person role as a healthcare provider and um, all information uh, of the person and also next uh, object organization is covered by using the HSE ID register. Uh, and um, in, in that way, you have the demographic information in place. Um, group is uh, the third object, and that is used uh, if you, for instance, have the need that uh, a uh, person from different organizations meet together and have uh, uh, some clinical purpose for for um, for um, uh, see a patients or a group of patients that could be. In the, there are many situations in the healthcare that this is need, and you here have an access point or a re possibility to make registrations on the patient level. Uh, the fourth object is resource, and um, this is a, a object that has to be further analyzed, but it has a lot of potential as, a, as a, we see it. You can, for instance, uh, organize all your patient room and patient beds as a resource and the availability can uh, be shown. You can have your different types of uh, X-ray uh, equipment and available time or, or uh, also personal resources in form of operation time or uh, availabilities that you can organize it it's in uh, a lot of ways and uh, will uh, that will be suitable for 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 many organizations 
the, the key function uh, for making this work is actually that you cr the system creates a unique demographic ear around every new demographic object. So in that, that way, you create a connecting point and an RPE for, for every uh, new object. So that is actually, if you combine registers of different types and uh, this function, you, you, you can have um, uh, create values actually. I come back now to important uh, feature is uh, relationships and that uh, is uh, done by uh, we use the open air archetype called party relationship. Uh, a relationship is always unidirectional from source to destination, but as you see, it depends on which side you sit. So um, uh, you have from both sides, from one to, to another. Uh, the valid time always have a start time and often an end time. Not in this example, the biological relationships is endless. And, uh, but the caregiver actually uh, can be changed if uh, the situation for the boy, for example, is changed depending on social uh, changes, social situation. Uh, the relationships can be also huge uh, dif of different types and can be organized in a lot of ways, but uh, it's a smart function. Uh, now you get a very complicated picture, but it's not that much details, but uh, the principle is that up on the upper part you have and the left uh, side, you have the organization, different levels of organization in a simple way. One hospital and you have primary cares of, of uh, different number during primary care A. You have a BBC or children health care unit that is uh, depending on and on the other side down in the left corner, you have an elder care. Uh, so that's just a simple example of, of how it can look like. In the middle, you have Dr. AA. He's working at uh, the children clinic at the hospital. And part-time, he's working also on the primary care level uh, at the children health care unit. Uh, he, the, the hospital, uh, look at him as a co-worker, and so also the children healthcare unit. So the, the organization looks, and the doctor looks at his his uh, different uh, uh, tasks. The boy in the right uh, end is uh, looking at his healthcare unit as wh where he belongs. He looks at the doctor, say, that's my doctor. And, and he, the doctor says he's a patient and has a start time when he first met him. Um, in the middle, uh, that's a mother to the boy. He's all, also working at the primary care B uh, unit. And the unit say, sees her as a crew worker. Crew worker. Uh, her father is living in the elder care down below, and he is a listed per patient to the primary care. And they have a father and daughter relationships. So this is a small example of, of relationships that the system builds up automatically. and, and uh, uh, that can be logged. 
you don't need to, to make it uh, uh, manually because every time a, a, a de demographic object is presented to the system, uh, they, they test uh, will be, is updated against the registers. So, uh, in, in uh, conclusion, uh, we think that um, a demographic serv service on, uh, on the level of national, regional, or can, can be a, a, a large, uh, creating a, a large value and a great value for, for uh, to, to connect different air systems if they use the same demographic service. Uh, today we have, uh, I guess my own medical journal is uh, fragmented on a lot of different systems during the years. And, and uh, if you don't actually uh, use a demo, um, uh, open air demographic services in that way, you you will will um, uh, have the same in practice the same uh, situation will continue. So if you have a demographic service, different air systems, you can create uh, one patient get his one journal or, or, or points where you can reach your journals in an easy way. And if you don't mess around with demographic data in the air side, the system is pretty secure. And you can also get a mirror of the, the hierarchical uh, relationship between different healthcare organizations, co works, and patients. And, um, by doing no extra work manually. So this was the message from me. And uh, I stopped sharing and now we try to get a Roger uh, to, to continue with demonstration for our system. Uh, I can, Roger uh, uh, is sitting in Italy now and the server is in Stockholm and I in, um, in John Chipping. Jag hör ingenting, Roger. Du är mutad. Roger, du är mutad. Okej, okay, I'll start all over. Um, uh, my name is Roger Lidekrona and um, I am the development manager at eWeave and uh, been working with uh, uh, Open Air Solutions for over 15 years now. I'm a programmer, uh, IT security specialist, uh, system architect and, and etc. I have a lot of roles in different situations. Uh, I will try to share my screen. Okay, here we are. This is eWeave Core. Uh, our system. Um, it's based around all, all the demographic objects that uh, Jürgen had mentioned. Uh, here is me as a user. And uh, this is an uh, organization I've in, been working for, uh, all working for. And this is a group that I belong to as a member. And this is just a test patient that we are going to this is a little bit later in this demonstration. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, uh, it is a, a web-based uh, solution. And I will, of course, uh, focus on the demographic part of the open air and show how our implementation of the demographic part is uh, in the, implemented in the eWeave core system. So I start here a um, little bit about this uh, view. It's, this is my calendar, this is my activities, and this is uh, different kinds of, of uh, oh, sorry. Uh, 
applications. And I will show you how to manage uh, different uh, demographic objects. So I start with our system. Uh, application or uh, yeah. This is a, just a main view that's showing you uh, the different parts of, of view core. And uh, uh, one of the main part here is the, the demographic database server. Uh, this is the web server over here. And uh, this is the system group server uh, that holds everything together. Uh, the system group server always know uh, which demographic server uh, the system is a part of and what with which uh, air server we will use. Now over to the model. Everything is built around um, uh, archetypes. So here you can see uh, different kind of, of, of archetypes. This is the air part, and this is the demographic, demographic part. And we will focus on that one. Yeah. Uh, all the archetypes is uh, created in different kinds of, of uh, uh, softwares. So um, uh, the archetypes we have in our system is created and taken from open air. In some cases, we have created or adapted archetypes. And Jorgen has uh, been doing a lot of this work. Uh, this is the party that we, we always start from. Uh, in the demographic world of open air, it can be uh, an agent, organization, or person, or group. That's the main uh, objects uh, that we are using. Uh, <clears throat> I will concentrate a lot of showing you how the person object is uh, uh, created, or we are we are, in fact, we are downloading uh, an archetype into the system and activate the, the, the archetype itself. And after that, we have a stored uh, archetype in the system. We have also done this with organization, for example. And I'll now show you uh, the organization that we have. This is the uh, RDL file that we have been uh, downloading and activate. This is mean it's active in the, in the system. And on the right side here, you can see all the information that are coming from the RDL file. And on the right side here, we can see the active uh, archetype, uh, just to see it, uh, it is activated in the system. This is another part of the system. That's the role part. Uh, a role is uh, a role that a person can have uh, for different kinds of, of uh, roles <laughs> in the system. This is the party identity. Uh, yeah. So. Um, the, the, the main part, the, 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 now I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, archetype templates. This is, archetype templates are uh, a number of linked demographic uh, archetypes together. And uh, I will show you an example. So this is all the uh, demographic archetypes that we have loaded into the system. This is the start point for, for, uh, for uh, agent. This is kind of the way of code resource. This is organization and this is person. And in the person we have built an archetype template. So we build the archetype template in the system. Uh, so this is the template itself. And there is a lot of uh, uh, linked in uh, archetypes in this template. So we can here see this is, we have linked in, sorry, sorry. 
we have LinkedIn uh, address, the address part here, for, for, as an example. Person ID part. A lot of details about the birth and so on. Let's link it in, in this template. Uh, when the template is ready, we can create a form. So here is a form. So you can, there it is. Uh, this is the base for a form. Uh, we are, are um, checking all the parts that we will include in the form. So here we have uh, address information. We have uh, uh, information about the phone, email address and so on. So there are different kinds of, of, of fields. The main, the main, the, the, the most use, uh, common is, is the text field, we have, but we have also uh, at the time as a date time field. And if you have been working with um, OpenAir, you can recognize the name of this. This DT date and time. But I will. Focus a little bit about uh, how to see a text field. So we can take, for example, we can take, for example, this one. This is uh, the properties of of a, a text field, and um, we have some labels uh, that we can use. The 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 original uh, label is the is here per person number, but we can set a new name if we want to have another name. So we have uh, renamed this to person ID, person number, reserve number, and the summonings number. We can also have special uh, label uh, when we print out information from this uh, demographic uh, uh, field. Uh, it can be read only, it can be disabled, uh, it, can, it can't be empty, it can be invisible. Uh, if it's invisible, we can activate it later in, in uh, what we call form functions. We can have a description for this field. This is description from the archetype, and we can set a new description if we want that. We have different uh, to, to keep in mind here, the, the, the text field is always saving a text, nothing else. But we can put in text in different kinds of ways. So here we can show to uh, just use a regular text input uh, method. We can have, uh, and, uh, for example, a text area or a text editor or a drop down menu with values or uh, a lot of different kinds of, 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 of uh, input methods. Here is, uh, for example, information of to select a demographic uh, name field. And when we, are, when we are using this one, the system is loading or this is saving uh, the, the unique ID for this uh, demographic object that we are pointing out, not the name of the object. So we never store uh, the uh, text names, names of the, directly. We can uh, adjust this, uh, how much characters we are saving in the database for this uh, field. Now it can save up to 60 characters. And we can also see in the system that we have a max of uh, 12 characters. Uh, say it. Yeah, no. Okay. It is properties of text fields. Uh, we can take a look at the form. form. 
this is the form. Uh, some of these tabs you see is grayed out because there are low detail functions and not from the real uh, uh, architect template. Here we have uh, identities. We have different kinds of details as a birthday, for example. Um, so if I change something, uh, it will, uh, if this field that I change will automatically update in, 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 the, in the form. In the form, we have also a lot of uh, functions, uh, intelligent functions that we can add to the form. Just for an example, uh, intelligent functions here are stored as different functions. So when we load the information into the form, the trigger is if we load, this means uh, when we are loading all the data into the form. And then it's checked if the person have, uh, is more than 15 years old. If it is 15 years old, uh, more than 15, uh, 15 years old, show uh, the workplace address information. Otherwise, if it falls, hide it. Let's see, just a, a small example. So that's the, that's the configuration part, uh, very shortly described. Now I will go over here. Back to the to the start uh, window, and uh, we are going to take a little small uh, look at our test patient has this Robin test. Uh, here is the form that I can activate. We have been looking at earlier, so if I open this one, you can see data stored in the, this uh, demographic template for this special person. And we have identities, we have uh, personal ID, we have here have a, a configure so we have see the, can, can see the history of personal IDs for this person. It's uh, the gender is a man, uh, is it is a process on this person. This is the name, the first name, and this is the last name. Other details here is so the birthday and so on. We have here different kinds of relation, relationship to this person. This is uh, the biological Father is test test bag, and the biological mother is testina test bag. Uh, uh, we, have, uh, we can we can also see here that they have caregivers uh, test test bag and testina test bag, and this patient belongs to our DNA and board system, and the responsible person there is Julian Kana. This person can we can also register. Uh, kind of language this person speaks. So this is just for, for example, this is, uh, yeah, I think that is the important part here. Uh, all the information is updated automatically from the population register. So if you want to uh, manually uh, update, we can click on this uh, uh, button here. We can print out all the information. Yeah, and if we change something, we can, of course, uh, save it. Save and close directly. There's another option here. So, uh, another part that I will show you is the, uh, an application that we are Using the here, here we can see all the air info, the uh, air data saved for this patient. And I'm going to open this one. This is about 
Uh, 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 it's, it's even by Shabbat about, about uh, uh, family and so on. So here is the biological uh, parents, biological mother and the father. And I can change this one because it's from the population register. And here we have uh, uh, the caregivers, this uh, person. And in fact, I can change this. There's a need to do that. Hmm? That's, I think, that's the important part here. This is it's not saved in the database, uh, database as tested in a test bag. It's a security uh, ID that is used here behind. If I go back here, we can take a little look at uh, the whole demographic world we are using now. And I will go to as well. Here is the, the organization of the board system. And we can see here it's, uh, they have a lot of members here. Uh, for example, we have a group called Administrator of the Board System and uh, another group Board of Behandling of the Board System. And this is person who, who are working for this organization. And here's our. So we can also always edit the information uh, inside uh, here, change something if you want to. Maybe change, uh, I don't know, the name or something. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I want to show you today. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, we are finished with the demo, or is there more? I think I think we're finished with uh, with the demo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Um, well, then we can check our chat. There are a few questions. I was just about mm -hmm. asking a question myself, but uh, we'll see if I remember it <laughs> when we are through the other questions. So I just okay start from the beginning uh, mm. with the questions that arrived before you presented this. Um, so the first one is, have you tested or planned to test connecting your front end to any other OpenHR CDR as back end? Back end. What do you say, Jürgen? Jürgen, till var? Han smet. Han smet. Uh, nej, nej, no, uh, not so far. No, we haven't, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. And no, no plans forward? Yeah, if we have, um, Interest, we are very open for that. Hmm? For other vendors or, or um, yes, uh, we are very, very open. It'd be nice hmm. to test. Yeah. I guess, guess that would be for the EHR part, uh, trying to combine that with your uh, demographics part. It'd be interesting to see. Hmm. Yeah, continue with the mm. second question then. Uh, what are the long-term 
plans of the company and the product. And a background for that is that some regions are a bit curious about the size of the company. I wonder about the long-term support risks. Uh, we are a, a small company, but we have a lot of uh, consultants around us. And um, uh, we, I think we are very strong because of, of our in implementation of, of uh, the demographic part. Uh, it's not so usual that the other companies, I think they don't do that uh, as, as we do. Um, so I think we can be a, uh, we can be a solution for the demographic part uh, for other companies. And um, being a solution in that, uh, yeah, part. Yeah, so you, you see yourself as a, as part of a joint venture, perhaps? Or... Yeah, yeah, I think so. Good. Hmm? Uh, those were the pre-announced questions. And then let's see, there was another one from Eric, I think, or someone in Stockholm. In the current slide, and I think that was number six in the first presentation, in uh, <laughs> Jürgen's presentation, uh, do you mean legal guardian rather than caregiver? And I don't know if you should check this slide six, just to remember. Yeah, yeah, we mean legal guardian. We mean legal guardian. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and the last question in the chat is, in your written responses for the RFI, uh, regarding logging, you refer to OpenEHR's built-in audit details feature that likely works for logging write operations, but how do you log read operations when end use users access information via application or API? Mm. So how do you log read operations? Uh, the only read operations we are, are, are uh, logging is when somebody is open uh, a patient's ear. For the moment, because uh, the, the the reason for that is that open ear is not describing that you have to log read operations, uh, all read operations. I, I could add to that, but no, of course, open air doesn't bother about how you do that kind of logging. But the Swedish law is very much interested in make be making it possible. Uh, 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 not. Uh, how do you log that uh, outside open air? Yeah. We are logging all uh, actions in the system. So if you change something or uh, say something new, uh, it's always logged. If you create uh, a new information or some kind, it's always logged. And if you open a, a patient, I mean, then you are free to, to open uh, applications that show, are showing uh, medical information. So. Okay, thanks. Mm. So, so auditing is possible. It was just yeah, finished. it is possible, but what we have uh, we haven't uh, activated all all read operations, but we can we can, but we are following on the open air for the moment. The rules for open air. Are you satisfied with that answer, mm. Eric? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, if, and maybe as long as it's possible to log what's being done, then we can follow the law. Thanks. Do, do you want me to show your activity logs? Uh, perhaps we should open for other questions. Before All right. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, I had one. I, I'm not sure I remember what I thought. So maybe I'll, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And maybe it's a stupid question, but uh, anyhow, we have seen your solution to, to meet PDL requirements is to use the demo demographic module and uh, other vendors use other methods. And, and in Sweden, we have uh, an implementation, implementation guide written that uh, suggests another way of solving the same problem. And th those seems to be two, two good ways to solve the same problem. Is it possible to combine these two? In some, I mean, I was thinking if there, 
might be interested in using the demographic module for other reasons than just following the PDL. For example, if you are in the genetics domain and, and need to cope with relationships, uh, which is not related that much to PDL. Uh, could you could you combine these methods, or should we just choose one one way or the other? Are they exclusive or combinable? I don't know if you can mm. ask like that, but uh, it's always uh, combinable, but uh, in, in different uh, at different levels. I, I think it's important when you have a. Uh, the med medical information in some kind, sometimes you want to have demographic information in that form. And uh, if you're using the open implementation, you can put in that information uh, in the form uh, automatically. And if you change something in, in that part, you change something about the demographic information in the demographic server. So the next, if someone else is opening information about this patient and, and uh, using a form with this information, uh, demographic information, uh, it will be updated from the earlier person or caregiver. So it depends on how you want to implement the demographic information, just as a uh, separate a window, you can use different kinds of system, but if you want to uh, include it in the form, if, if you are using a form and every time you're using this form are manually uh, uh, put in demographic information, it's a lot of copy work, I think. Uh, that's, uh, I, I think that is the big difference, how you implement this. Thank you. Are there more questions? I think you have uh, some kind of support for uh, plans, for example, when when the baby is born, there are supposed to be certain visits. Uh, perhaps you could just demo that a little bit, because I think you solved it in an interesting way, if I understood correctly. What do you want to see? Can you repeat? So if you have a, a uh, a new child being entered yeah. into the system, you could mm. automatically set up a plan of some kind for yeah. three okay. visits uh, during different ages. Yes, but that's, that, that's, uh, I think that's just an air uh, question. Yeah, but since we have some uh, Yeah, we... for example, in our system, we have, uh, in, you, you can put it in a lot of. Uh, uh, plannings, what to do and so on. So here we have, if as just an example, this is different kinds of, of the, uh, this is uh, the CERC. So you can show to uh, activate all these uh, visits uh, at, at the same time. And there is, depending, depending on when the patient is born in this example, uh, he, he's born in 2009, so that's the, so after, there are uh, visits after one week, this is the start, start time and this is the end time as a time, uh, say, period when you should book this meeting with the patient. So if I click here, I don't want to do that because we have already done this with this patient, we can make this all these uh, meetings uh, activated in the system at once. You have the same as we call, we call our base center because we have used all the base uh, uh, forms. This extra you put in. This is for the vaccination program for uh, uh, a baby. A small child. Do you pick and choose from these lists and then you make an individual plan by just clicking? Just by clicking. <laughs> mm. 
and uh, in the system module you can set up how or which uh, uh, meetings that you have to do. So in, the, in, in every meeting you can add information if you want to in, on, uh, with different tabs with different in, informations. I think that is a. I think open air is difficult because uh, it's very static. I, I, I it's very static because they are. If you are going to have a form with uh, health problems or health work plans, uh, you have to make that as, as a static model. We have uh, so we can put them together. There are information. There are. Uh, solutions and open it, how to do that, in fact, and we have done that. So if I want to put something else in here, I can do that. That's one. But this is, this is from the air part of the system. Yeah. Thanks. Some more question? Questions? We have a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. Is it possible, possible to extract data and use it for analysis? Uppföljning, vad har heter det nu då? Yeah, uh, we can always do that. We can extract data, we can uh, make a report. Of all, of, we have a report module there. This is different kinds of, of reports. We can always create new reports. Oh. And we can run uh, large uh, reports because we can travel through all the, the, the organization. This is a lot of uh, care units in order to in fact. Hmm. Yeah. So that is the report side, and this is uh, all the activities. Hmm. This is information about me. I have logged in in different time, different times in the system. And then uh, here's information about if I change something or if I uh, load an, an, uh, another demographic object as a, as I have load uh, to see information in uh, about the avdeling board system. Harry, so uh, uh, yeah, oh, you, you can export you can export all this information to a CSV file for for uh, oh, to care about the information in another program, for example, Excel or something. But this is sensitive information. It's about, uh, here is all the personal IDs and so on. So you have to be careful. Yeah. Uh, just about to say that we're running out of time here, but we have a last yeah. question in the chat, so maybe we can oh, okay. come to that one. Uh, and it's a question about archiving. Uh, all most information in a patient record must be archived at some point. Is it possible to export the information, for example, in XML? Yeah, it, it, it's it's possible. Uh... You can make it as a, a report for a patient, or you can uh, uh, save it as a print out. Uh, you can uh, export information directly from from all the the the, the whole ear for the patient. But this is in in a special format. 
XML is possible, yes. Hmm? Yeah. I think there is time for perhaps one more question or so. Okay. <laughs> we have to wrap up. Yep. Yes. Anyone? Doesn't seem so. And if okay. there comes up more questions, is it okay if we contact you afterwards also? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well then, then I say thanks a lot for this uh, presentation. It was in interesting to hear about uh, demographics. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you all.